Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. For the past few days I've been writing a very long video on the geological work that has taken place on the megalithic monument of Sacsayhuaman in Peru. And whilst waiting on some vital information from a geologist who has worked on the site, I thought I'd make this video on something I need to say in addition to my recent Great Flood video. In that video, I explained how I didn't think there was ever a global Great Flood. But by Great Flood I mean like a deluge, where the entire world and all of the ancient civilizations were affected by huge amounts of water in one instance. A true global cataclysm. Whether that's tsunamis, a rapid rise in sea level, global rains and so on. For example, the archaeological record shows that some major settlements do show continuous habitation before, during and after the Younger Dryas, such as Natufian settlements in the Fertile Crescent. If there was a Great Flood that coincided with the Comet Impact Hypothesis, I am yet to see sediments that can be explained as flood related in and around the famous Black Mat Layer. But of course, maybe the sediments do exist but are now under the ocean. It just depends how great a Great Flood may have been, and how far inland tsunamis may have come. I explained that since the last glacial maximum, there have been two major pulses of meltwater into the oceans, those being Meltwater Pulse 1A and 1B, the latter of which marries up with the end of the Younger Dryas period. But these were gradual rises in sea level. We're talking 40mm per year, and according to the data, they can't really be described as a cataclysmic global Great Flood. But in this video, I want to go back to the beginning of the Younger Dryas, around 12,800 years ago, when a cataclysm of some kind plunged the planet back into an ice age, and also led to a major megafaunal extinction. We all know there is a strong body of evidence that a series of impact events or cosmic airbursts were responsible, but those that oppose the idea state that the main piece of evidence is a lack of impact craters. In response though, if fragmented comet impacts or airbursts were concentrated on the northern hemisphere, the impact sites could well have been the ice sheets themselves. That's the main hypothesis and the evidence is mounting. And if that's the case, would such impact events have caused a global Great Flood? I speculated that there would have been rapid heating, and hence rapid melting of ice, and therefore some parts of the world like North America may have witnessed a cataclysmic flood. But other parts of the world like Central Africa or Asia may have experienced something very different. Some papers and their associated graphs say there was no rapid rise in sea level, no meltwater pulse at the beginning of the Younger Dryas, and that this was actually a time when the rate of sea level rise actually drops. And through the Younger Dryas it does drop. But after releasing my video on the subject, I reviewed all the data again. I got some high resolution graphs and downloaded a few more papers on the subject, and well, there is something that is often glossed over in a number of papers, but has been noted by people such as the brilliant Antonio Zamora. At the beginning of the Younger Dryas, there is an abrupt increase in the rate of sea level rise. Global sea levels rose by 2 to 4 metres within a few decades, as recorded in coral reefs in both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. This graph was published by Edward Bard et al. in the paper titled Deglacial Meltwater Pulse 1b and Younger Dryas Sea Levels Revisited with Boreholes at Tahiti. This came out in 2010. It shows this little bump, which is a 3 metre rise in sea level that took place in just 50 years. This rise marries up with a small warming peak at the end of the Bolling Alarod period, just before the Younger Dryas began. To put that into perspective, we could see what would happen to New York City if sea levels rose by 3 metres in the next 50 years. Here's what happens to Britain. You can play with this yourself on floodmap.net. The global map does look pretty much the same, but when you zoom into coastal cities, towns and villages, and also the points where rivers meet the sea, well, in the modern world, a 3 metre rise by the year 2071 means that places would have to be abandoned. Of course, the further inland you are, the safer you'd be. 
At the beginning of the Younger Dryas, coastal communities that relied on fishing would have had to have abandoned their settlements and moved inland. These ancient shores that were flooded now sit under 65 metres of water. So, they are not easy to look at, but if we want to find evidence of a global flood at the beginning of the Younger Dryas, these are the sediments that do need to be looked at. They would tell us just how cataclysmic this rise was. They would tell us if there were tsunamis hitting coastlines around the world. The sediments would also tell us how quickly it took place. 3 metres in 50 years is the same as 6 centimetres per year which is more cataclysmic than Meltwater Pulse 1A and 1B, but it still doesn't sound like a global cataclysm. Unless of course the 3 metre rise happened in less time, whether 10 years, 5 years and so on. So, how does a comet impact event generate a huge rise in sea level, but also cause a period of cooling? Well, an impact on the Laurentide ice sheet would have caused a shockwave, and this would have displaced chunks of ice laterally which, according to Antonio Zamora, does explain the form and shape of the Carolina Bays. The heat generated by the impact would have also produced a volume of meltwater in a short space of time, as well as putting steam or water vapour into the atmosphere. This vapour would have cooled in the atmosphere and condensed as liquid and also as ice crystals. They would have encircled the planet in the high atmosphere and would have reflected the rays of the sun back into space, stopping them reaching the surface of the Earth and cooling the planet rapidly. Antonio Zamora says the ice crystals and vapour could have remained in the atmosphere for more than 1,000 years, which is basically the entire duration of the Younger Dryas period. But would the impacts of the Younger Dryas have caused enough meltwater to see a 3 metre rise globally? Well, the main cause of the excess water is the heat caused by the impacts, and so, it all relates to the size and quantity of the impact events. The thing is, anything is possible if you have a large enough impact. On top of this, in hypothetical models, the impact events would have also sent shockwaves travelling under the ice sheets. The ice would have been fractured and the ground surface would have been heated, causing meltwater to form at the base of the glacier where it stays as a liquid due to the pressures exerted by the glacier above. This, together with the melting caused by the impacts themselves, would generate a lot of water. Unless we can analyse the sediments of the ancient shorelines from 12,800 years ago, those now 64 metres below sea level, we can only really guess if this 3 metre rise was violent and cataclysmic, or whether it was gradual, being 6 centimetres per year for 50 years. The impact events are not thought to be oceanic, so it's unlikely that mega tsunamis would factor. But we can't get away from the fact that we do see a global sea level rise in a short space of time. For me personally, I do see it as a gradual rise and not a cataclysmic flood for the entire globe. Again, what I mean by globally cataclysmic is the thought of water rising so rapidly that it's hard to escape it, or tsunamis battering every coastline and travelling far inland, or rains that don't stop and cause flooding around the world. This is how I always pictured a great flood. If I want to take this further, I know I need to analyse all of the great flood myths from around the world, from various cultures, and pick out key observations and see how they could relate to data associated with the beginning of the Younger Dryas. This is the way to see if cultures were in fact recording a Younger Dryas great flood event. But even if the flooding was gradual, it would still have meant that people had to abandon their homes. Imagine living on the coast, experiencing a sudden and major drop in temperature, and at the same time, sea levels kept rising year after year. That 50 year period must have been totally devastating for so many, and changed the lives of every human on the planet in one way or another. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.